Hello and welcome to my knitting channel. My name is Abby. It has been two months since I last appeared on this channel, so I have a lot of knitting to talk about. I started multiple projects since we last talked. I finished two projects that you haven't even seen yet. I also have a little bit of spinning to talk about as well as some sewing. The first finished object I have is this sweater slash top. This is the Look at My Holes by Jameson Watts. It is a mesh crop top with short sleeves. And let me tell you the story about this sweater. A few months ago, I was in one of my local yarn stores and there happened to be a trunk show by Trilogy Yarns and I came across this green color and I was really drawn to it. I don't know what it is about this like lime green, but I'm really into it. And then she pointed out to me this yarn. This is a fluorescent yarn. So parts of the dye um, are dyed with fluorescent dye. And it's sort of like a gray base with pops of the fluorescent sort of yellow green dye as well as uh, sort of some darker greens that kind of go with this green. As soon as the ND dyer pulled out her black light and showed me what this yarn could become, I immediately had a vision and I knew what I wanted to make with it. So as far as I know, she only had one of these skeins, but like I said, I was also really drawn to this green color. So I decided to get one of each and stripe them. And it wasn't until like a month after I brought them home that I realized the green was actually a sport weight and the fluorescent yarn was a fingering weight. Um, but they're actually so similar in thickness that I don't even think you can tell. So that ended up working out, but for a moment there I was pretty worried that this wasn't going to work. Just a few weeks ago we went to a music festival here. It's local and we buy the tickets like well in advance and so I knew that I was coming up and I wanted to make this top because a lot of the venues have black lights and so I just had this vision that this was going to be amazing to wear on the dance floor and it was. I had such a great time wearing this top to the music festival. Um, unfortunately due to weather I was only able to wear it one of the days but it was fantastic and that day was like perfect weather to wear it and it all just really worked out. I had so much fun wearing this top. I felt so cool. I don't know if anyone else thought I was cool, but I thought I was cool and that's all that matters to me. So I'll talk a little bit about making this top. The pattern uh, overall was really good. Um, there's an updated version of version two that includes um, neck and shoulder shaping. So it has some flat uh, short rows before you join in the round to give um, to raise the back neck. So that is the version that I knit. After that, it's joined in the round and you work from the top down. Um, creating this raglan seam and then of course the rest of the pattern is in this mesh. So as I mentioned I striped the two colors. Um, the way that I did that was just every other row I switched colors um, and I think it really worked well to blend the colors together. Um, I was a little bit worried about it looking like it was striped because that was not the effect I was going for. I really wanted to create a more cohesive yarn, um, but I think it worked out. I don't think you can tell, and even with the black light on it, because the fluorescent dye is like speckled in that one yarn, um, it doesn't come across as striped. So I think that really worked out well. I'll put some photos of me at the festival and at a couple of the venues that had black lights. I didn't get any photos like while we were actually like at a concert. We went, we just got into some of the venues a little early to try to get some quick photos. It's always hard getting photos like in public. Um, so I don't think the effect is like fully there um, as much as it was while we were actually like in a concert. 
but uh, I think you can kind of tell and get the vibe. So the biggest modification that I made is the yarn weight because this pattern calls for DK weight yarn and it's also I think meant for a linen yarn because it's meant to be worn like in the summer, right? It's like fully mesh. There's a lot of holes to look at. Um, and so I changed it to fingering weight um, and sport weight, I guess, but I think that this was a very thin sport weight. So I'm going to say that it's a fingering weight sweater. And all I did was change the needle size. I went down from a 9 to a 7 um, because that was just more comfortable for my hands and for this yarn. And I think I knit the extra large. Um, yeah, I knit the extra large to get a circumference of 38 inches which is two inches of positive ease for me and that worked out perfectly um i just knit a, a gauge swatch and measured my gauge and figured out which size to knit um to get the size that i actually wanted i think it fits perfectly yeah the pattern gauge is three and a half stitches per inch and my gauge was four and a half stitches per inch so i definitely changed it uh, pretty significantly, but I'm really happy with how it worked out. And then for the ribbing, I also just went down two needle sizes from the main body and uh, worked combination knitting for the one by one ribbing. I love this mesh pattern. I think it's so cool. Um, at the start, it was a lot of fun to do, and I think by the end, I was kind of over it. Um, but I was also like deadline knitting, right? I think I left myself um, about a month to knit this and I took up almost the whole month. And then to finish all of the hems, I did an Italian bind off or a tubular bind off, um, which I always think looks very nice and professional on ribbing. This was so much fun to knit. It's so much fun to wear. I love the fluorescent yarn and um i totally want to make more of these i do want to make a linen version for the summer but even this superwash merino was totally fine to wear in like 65 degree weather um, i wore it with like a bralette underneath and then just pants and uh, i felt super comfortable until it started to get a little chilly and i had a jacket with me so i was totally fine um and the weather was like perfect for it. The other thing I wanted to talk about was with the stripes, the one by one striping. So as I mentioned earlier, when you start the sweater, you knit it flat for a few rows to make the back neck taller. And you actually can't knit one by one stripes flat because you start over here with color A, you work across the row. So now your color A is here then you join color b here and you work across this row and when you're ready to work back this way again color a is not over here it's over here so to knit one by one stripes flat there's a technique that you can use where you convert your right side row to a wrong side row and then you can work across the row using the yarn that you need where it actually is in your knitting so the way that I did it was I used color one to work across a right side row. I used color two to work across a wrong side row. So nothing changed there. Then I used color one over here to work a wrong side row. So I converted the next row, which should have been a right side row. I converted that to a wrong side row. So I knit it um, inverted and I knit it backwards and then I knit the fourth row using color two um, doing a right side row so again I had to convert it to the right side luckily the way that it worked out none of the rows where you're actually making the holes by doing the double yarn overs um, luckily none of those rows fell onto a row that I had to invert uh, so that kept it a little bit easier for me, but you basically just start at the end of the row and you knit all of your purls and you purl all of your knits. That's kind of as simple as it is. It sounds like a little bit complicated, but when you're actually doing it, it's not too complicated. Um, and it lets you knit one by one stripes flat. 
The other thing I wanted to mention with this top is that I made a really big mistake that I kind of fixed. I think I mitigated the error rather than fully fixing it. Uh, so let me walk you through what happened. So this lace is an eight row repeat and it's not too complicated, but every four rows you stagger where the holes are placed so that it looks like this and it's not just a bunch of holes stacked vertically on each other. While I was knitting away on my lace, I was also watching the show Constellation, which is a sci-fi time travel show on Apple TV. Um, I actually haven't finished it. I haven't finished the first season yet, but it's very like mind trippy like there's a lot going on there's a lot that you can miss if you don't pay close attention to it and it's a little confusing like just trying to understand kind of what's going on and why certain things are happening so i was very engrossed into that show and i was paying a lot of attention to it and i was not paying close attention to my knitting what i did is on one of the sleeves on one side of the sleeve the back side of of one of the sleeves i didn't stagger my yarn over hole so what happened is i actually added a hole and i did that three times <laughs> and i started it way up here so like somewhere around here i added a hole and then like another repeat later i added a hole and then another repeat later i added a hole so i wasn't actually increasing um like using the increases like i was following the pattern correctly i didn't increase too many times is what i'm trying to say but i added stitches by not staggering the hole correctly so once I got down here where I split for the sleeves, that's when I noticed it. And I was like, whoa, one of my sleeves is way larger than the other one. And so I looked at my knitting and I figured out what happened. And I was like, damn it, because I was just a few days away from like the deadline and I had already put so much effort into it. And so I pretty much thought like, okay, I have to re-knit this. Like I basically have to take the whole thing out in order to re-knit it. And I might not make the deadline in time. I might not be able to wear it to my festival, which was the whole point. So I decided to try to fix it. So let me turn this inside out to actually show you what happened and show you what I did to fix it. I also have pictures of this while I was working on it, so I'll use those to kind of help illustrate um, what I did. So essentially what happened is along the seam, there's like this extra wedge of fabric and it starts up here. So from here to the bottom of the sleeve or rather to the uh, separation of the sleeve and body, there's this extra wedge of fabric so i was really sitting on it for a while thinking about what i could do to just like remove this wedge of fabric because that's all that needed to happen i didn't have to go back and re-knit it because if i took this wedge of fabric out then everything was fixed and it was how it was supposed to be so i did, I used a bunch of swatches, I tried out a bunch of techniques to remove pieces of fabric, like vertically in the fabric. You know, obviously horizontally you can take out a chunk of fabric by cutting into it and then grafting your stitches back together, but vertically you can't do that in knitting. All of your stitches are going to come apart and you're gonna be left with just a bunch of like short pieces of yarn. So I did some research, I did some digging, I looked up a bunch of stuff, I consulted all of the knitting books that I have. I didn't come across anyone who has ever taken out like a vertical wedge of fabric before. So I was like, okay, I'm kind of on my own here. Um, maybe I missed something, so if you have ever come across that, like 
please let me know i'm so curious to know uh if this is like a thing like i'm sure i'm sure somebody has done it at some point um but i just wanted like I wanted to find someone who had done it and talked about it and I couldn't find that. So I sat with it and I thought like all I'm really trying to do is take this piece of fabric and like remove this part of it. And so if I can graft these stitches together using mattress stitch, then that wedge of fabric will be on the back and I could potentially use a Steaking technique of sewing along that line to reinforce all of those stitches and then just cut off that wedge of fabric. So that's what I decided to do, but I didn't get as far as actually cutting the wedge out. I was a little too nervous to do that because if it went wrong, not only was my top like not only did I need to start over, but I didn't have any more of this yarn. So I wasn't gonna be able to just re-knit the top. So what I ended up doing is just leaving this wedge of fabric in here and you can see like I put those stitches on hold. There's like 10 extra stitches that I put on hold. And I really like took a, a good long look and I like asked people who didn't know what the problem was. And I was like, can you tell like if I'm wearing this can you tell it didn't really stick up at all I think mostly it's obscured by the raglan seam I think if you really knew what you were looking for you could see it um, so it's not it's not entirely hidden but for the purpose of going to a music festival and having fun and dancing around like it was totally fine um, I didn't notice it, my boyfriend didn't notice it, I mean, maybe somebody else noticed it and they didn't tell me, but like, that didn't happen. So it really worked out for what I needed it to, but I kind of want to experiment with this idea a little bit more and actually try to sew that down and cut it. I definitely want to try it on some swatches before attempting it on this top. Since it is pretty unnoticeable, I might just leave it, um, you know, I'm not gonna wear it like a ton and it totally held up with a lot of bouncing around and, um, you know, wearing it to a music festival. Um, so I might just leave it, but I'm definitely curious if this is like a thing that I could do. <laughs> In the future there's a quote that i came across recently that was like experienced people don't stop making mistakes they just make bigger mistakes faster and i definitely felt that with this sweater i mean as long as you can figure out how to fix your mistakes in a way that you're satisfied with then like what's wrong with making mistakes especially when you are trying to figure out what the hell is happening in a really confusing TV show. The next finished object is also a sweater, although it is not a sweater for humans. It is a cat sweater. So during Christmas, I was knitting Christmas gifts for family members and for my partner's sister's girlfriend, I was planning on knitting a hat. And I brought the yarn, I was really running late on finishing the gift. So I brought the yarn with me and I was like, I'm just gonna work on it while we're here and give it to you then. Um, and as we were chatting, we were talking about cat sweaters. I don't know, I think I stumbled across a pattern and showed it to her and I was like, isn't this adorable? They have four cats and they love cats and we're just one big cat family, so. <laughs> Uh, I showed that to her and I was like, do you want this instead of the hat? And she was like, yes. So then I was kind of on the hook for making a cat sweater. The sweater I found was actually a crochet sweater and I decided to look if there was a knitted sweater instead. And there totally is. There's a kind of create your own pattern that I came across. Um, it's for dogs, cats, a bunch of different types of animals really um, I think really any like four-legged animal 
this could work for. But yeah, it's one of those patterns where you figure out your own gauge, you take your own measurements, and then the pattern kind of walks you through how to do the math to figure out the size sweater that you need. So it's a great pattern and I had a lot of fun <laughs> knitting this sweater. I just sent it off in the mail so I don't actually have it to show. Um, it's supposed to get there tomorrow so if I get some cat photos I will share those here. I did try to put it on one of my cats. Um, he was actually totally fine with it but he would not let me put his legs in the leg holes so i couldn't get any photos of it like fully on but he seemed pretty chill with it just like on his torso it was really cute the yarn i used is the barocco comfort yarn it is a it's an acrylic yarn um yeah it's 50 percent nylon 50 percent acrylic it is super soft this is a worsted weight. I think they also have a DK or maybe a fingering weight in this same yarn. Um, I love this yarn. This is like my new go-to baby yarn and also cat yarn, I guess. If I, <laughs> I might end up kind of getting roped into making more cat sweaters, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a really good yarn. So those are all of my finished objects and I have a couple of whip updates for you as well as a few new cast-ons. So let's start with an update on my Paul Clay sweater. This is the yoke and I have finished the body and finished one sleeve and I'm working on the second sleeve. I haven't made it super far yet. I also finished the neckband. So I'm getting really close on this. I kept kind of putting off filming, um, hoping that I would finish this sweater so I'd have it as a finished object to show you, but it just didn't happen. Um, it's fine. I got a little bit delayed on the neckline, which I will talk about in uh, more detail in just a moment, but for this sleeve, it's just stockinette in the round, you know, it's a lot of stockinette. Um, that's always the sort of drawback with these like really pretty colorwork yoke sweaters is that you get through the fun colorwork um, and you're like full of momentum and motivation. And then you kind of get bogged down by just the sheer amount of plain stock net in the round, it's a lot, um, especially for a fingering weight sweater. But I am very excited to finish it. Um, I love this sweater. I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it. And I still love this main color. The main yarn is Ritual Dyes Maiden in the colorway Loam. And I still think it is like the perfect color to pair with this yoke. For the yoke, I used mostly a coast-to-coast -coast sock set that I got um, in an advent um, that my partner put together for me. So that was a lot of fun to like match up all of the colors in this yoke. Um, I pulled in a few mini skeins that I had from my stash and um, I think one of them, the black one here, is from Tiny Human Knits, but otherwise they're all coast-to-coast. I don't think you can get that sock set anymore, um, so I won't go through all of the colorway names, but they are on my Ravelry page, and if you have any trouble um, accessing that, let me know and I can give you those colorway names, but yeah, I don't think it's worth going through all of them since I don't think you can get them anymore, but they are really beautiful. I love the way this yoke turned out, and now I'm just kind of getting through all of this stockinette. Um, I like stockinette in the round for specific uses. So if I'm sitting in a meeting and I wanna really pay attention in the meeting, stockinette in the round is perfect. Um, if I'm reading a book, um, I can pretty much only knit stockinette while I'm reading. Um, or anytime I'm just like really tired but I still wanna knit, stockinette really comes in handy. But just getting through so much of it, especially when I'm working on so many other fun projects, it can just kind of be a lot. So I'm not like forcing myself to get this done as quickly as possible, but I would like to finish it before like summer for sure, but like before 
spring really sets in. It's like we're having warmer days, but it hasn't fully set in yet here. Um, and so I think before we really hit that like warmer spring weather, I'd like to have this off the needles. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of making my way through stockinette sleeve and getting done what I can. Um, I want to talk about the neckline because I had a lot of issues with it. So I started this sweater with a provisional cast on. So I started it here right at the color work and that was because I didn't have the main color yet. I hadn't figured out exactly what color I wanted it to be. I hadn't ordered the yarn. Um, and so I wanted to just cast on the yoke, get started on the color work and figure out the main color later. So that's what I did. And then I converted the pattern, like the neckband, um, to be worked bottom up instead of top down as it's written in the pattern. And I worked that like according to the pattern, finished it. I did uh, two by two ribbing instead of one by one as called for in the pattern. And I also did a folded over neckband. So that was the change that I made. I completely finished it and I really hated it. I kept trying it on as I was working on the body and the sleeve and every time the neckline was just weird. It didn't fit right and it like stuck up in the back and it like puckered. So I decided to fix it and I made a pretty big modification um, and I filmed a video of that before I ripped it out, before I frogged it, um, just so I could talk through the issues that I had with it and what I was going to do to change it to make it fit better. So I'll pop that in here. This shape of short rows for a back neck is what I would consider to be upside down. So I know that I knit my neck upside down by picking up stitches here and knitting bottom up instead of knitting top down as in the pattern, but I reversed everything I did in order to do that. So the way that I worked the short rows, I worked them upside down, but I worked them as I would have if I followed the pattern and worked them top down. Basically, I even though I knit it upside down, I did knit it to pattern, except for, of course, the ribbing. Let's say that you're knitting this sweater top down because that's the way that the pattern is written. The way that you get this type of shape is by knitting the shorter short rows first and then gradually increasing to your longest short rows. So what's happened is the shape that creates kind of forces the ribbing into a bit of a hump right here at the back, which really doesn't help with the fit and it doesn't look very good in my opinion. I haven't been able to find a picture of the back of any of the official samples, but I have looked through a lot of other people's project photos and I've seen kind of a variety of different fits. I have seen this shape on other people's projects. I think for mine, it's a little bit more pronounced than it is on others, so I've seen this wedge shape on other people's sweaters and it actually like ended up working out and being pretty much fine so i don't want to just straight up say that this shape doesn't work at all but it doesn't really follow the way that our bodies are shaped and if you flip this and turn it upside down that does follow the shape of our body so i i just think there's not necessarily a reason to use this shape in your back neck shaping and I don't exactly know why the designer chose it. This sweater has been knit a ton of times and it's by a popular trusted designer. So I don't wanna just straight up say that it was a mistake, but I just think that there's a better way to do this. The other modification that I'm going to make to the neck is one that's more of a personal preference. So if you look at the way this is shaped, you can tell that the short rows start about here and they end about here. That's a pretty small wedge of fabric here. So one thing that I can do to help improve this fit even more is to take the short rows either to the sides of 
the sweater or even a little bit into the front of the sweater. I've knit yoke sweaters before where the short row shaping actually did come almost all the way to the very front of the sweater. You don't have to do that. You can also just bring the short rows just a little longer to the sides. Um, that also will help. I haven't decided exactly how much I'm going to extend those short rows. Um, one method is to cut your sweater into thirds and knit the short rows on the back two thirds of the sweater. So you leave that front one third of the sweater without short rows. And I think that typically produces a pretty good shape. And then to create this shape, but upside down, I'm going to start with my longer short rows and then get shorter and shorter. So to recap the changes that I'm going to make, I'm going to rip back to the color work of this sweater. Then I will flip the direction of the wedge of short rows so that the longer short rows are at the top and the shorter short rows are at the bottom. I'm going to bring the short rows further into the front of the sweater to provide more of a shape around my shoulders. I will also probably add a few extra short rows just because my row gauge is a little bit off and I think that this shaping ended up being quite a bit shorter than the pattern intended. And I'll probably stick with the same amount of ribbing as I did here because I don't want it to come up too high and I like the look of the thinner or more shallow ribbing. So I'll keep that, but I'll make those other fit changes and hopefully that helps fix the problem where the sweater wants to ride up and cause this like bubble of fabric here. I'm really hoping that by pulling up the back even more, the front will just relax and kind of stay flat across my chest. So here is the new back neckband. Um, I think it works so much better. It fits so much better. I'm really pleased with it. I did end up knitting a few extra short rows as well, um, just to add a little bit more length, and I think that was worth it. And then what I did, when I redid the ribbing, I still, I stuck with the double hem, or the rolled um, neckline, neckband. I can talk. I stuck with the rolled neckband, which I really liked, and I liked the 2x2 two two neckband as well. That's what I did actually for the, for all of the ribbing. So the hem is 2x2, two two, the sleeve cuffs are 2x2 two two as well. Um, I don't know, I think it just... I felt like it worked better with this design and with this yarn in particular. Um, so when I redid the neckband, I decided not to bind off my stitches. The first time around, I used the technique where you bind off a stitch at the same time as you pick up a stitch from the sweater. And that creates a very rigid neckband. So I think if you're dealing with a really like loose or very open neckband, you might want to go with that option just to keep it in place and kind of uh, stabilized. But for this neckband, which is a fairly typical size, it's not very large, um, I felt like it was way too tight and it was pretty hard to get it over my head. It wasn't super comfortable. So this time around, I decided actually to not bind off any of my stitches. I kept the stitches live and I just sewed them onto the inside of the body. And I think that worked super well. It's very stretchy. It doesn't feel too loose either. I think it's, it's pretty stable. Um, so I'll definitely use that again when I'm doing this type of neckband. Um, I also shortened the ribbing quite a bit as you can tell in the pattern it comes up quite high it's almost like a mock neck and um, I like that sometimes but for this pattern I just decided to keep it pretty short and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out. I also modified the sleeves which is something I do pretty often I don't always follow a sleeve pattern um, but I made a rookie mistake with the first sleeve that I knit. I, <laughs> I've i talked before, I mentioned in my goals video that I want to organize 
my circular needles and this is like the perfect example of why so i have all of my circular circular needles in a ziploc bag they're kind of just thrown in there like i wrap them around like i coil them up and then i put them in the bag but they get to be a big mess so it's always a pain when i need a circular needle but i usually use my interchangeable needle set and so it's not typically that big of a deal but this time i didn't have any cords free i didn't have those needles free and uh so i went digging into my um scary bag of circular needles i thought i found the right size i pulled it out i picked up my stitches and knit three-fourths of the sleeve before realizing that i was knitting the sleeve on the wrong size i had pulled out a size four instead of a size three and that looser gauge combined with the volume of the sleeve as written just the sleeve was way too big and i knew like the whole time i was knitting the sleeve it was in the back of my head i was like this is too big i don't like this i tried it on and i was like it's just a little too slouchy for like it looks unintentionally oversized and so you know it was one of those moments where i knew that it was wrong but i kept going so jokes on me i had to rip out the entire sleeve i picked up with the right size needles but i also changed the rate of decreases so as written in the pattern it's like every six rounds and i changed it to decreasing every four rounds so the sleeve is quite a bit smaller and i do think it fits a lot better especially with the uh circular yoke and raglan um combination like the raglan helps the sweater conform to your body a little bit better and so i think the sleeve being smaller just matches that more and looks a little bit better it's still a bit of a slouchy sleeve which i like um and then I think I stopped decreasing somewhere around here and then I just knit it um, with no shaping and I think I just went directly into the 2x2 two two ribbing and did a bit of a longer cuff than maybe I would normally and after blocking the superwash wool it relaxed a bit, um, it stretched out a tiny bit and the sleeve fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, of course, and um, once I block that, uh, I know it'll fit perfectly. Minna. <laughs> My cat is currently choosing violence. So after I made those modifications, I'm really happy with this sweater. Um, I'm almost to the finish line, just have to get through that second sleeve. And I'm already thinking about future um, color combinations for this sweater if I were to make another one. Especially because I ended up knitting this in Superwash, um, which I've been using a lot more lately because I've been making it a goal to work with indie dyed yarn and hand dyed yarn um, more often. But I don't love it. Um, I haven't worked with Superwash much. I had a really bad <laughs> experience with it at the very start of when I started um, knitting sweaters and since then I kind of stayed away from it completely. My cat is clicking my mouse right now. You have one more chance and I'm kicking you out of this room. The worst. Yeah, I think the color work turned out as good as it can with Superwash, um, but you know, with non-superwash, uh, color work is just so much more even and crisp. I also have an update on my pitch coat cardigan, coat again. Um, so I'm still working on the back panel. I am close to being able to bind off, which is a milestone that I've kind of mapped out in my head, but I'm not quite there. Um, so this is Pitch by Emily Green. It is an all over cable and moss stitch long cardigan. It's marketed as a coat, so it's very oversized and kind of meant to be, I guess, worn more as like outerwear. Um, but I kind of am making it more to be a cardigan. It's a little bit smaller, less positive ease. 
So last time I was here at this marker, um, so I have knit quite a bit since the last time I showed this to you, but um, I'm still working on the armholes. Um, I think I have like maybe four more inches to go, so I've got quite a bit more to go. I'm still really enjoying this. Um, it's a fun pattern to knit. It's engaging, um, but not overly complicated. Um, at this stage, I've stopped decreasing, so I'm just working um, straight and just doing these cables along the edges. I think I have reached the point where the pitch in the cables is no longer occurring. So they have moved all the way to the edge stitches. Obviously they started way down here together um, and then they slowly pitch out um, to the very edge of the back. I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which is what the pattern calls for, um, in the colorway Snowbound, which is this nice tweed, light gray. Um, it's a little bit hard on my hands. I don't love working with it, but I think I'm really going to like the finished object. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my update on that. The other thing I wanted to talk about with this sweater is my gauge discrepancy because I am not on gauge with this sweater and I want to talk about what my gauge is, what the difference is, why I proceeded with this gauge, and what my final sweater will end up being. Um, I love talking about gauge. I think I just like to suffer, but if you are super bored by that, um, I'm gonna have chapters that you can skip around um, in this video. So if you don't care, definitely feel free to skip it, but if you're a little bit nerdy and you want to know what I did to figure out how to proceed with getting a different stitch gauge in the stitch patterns, um, I'm going to walk you through all of the math that I did to figure that out. Well, my camera died. I ate a burrito. I went outside in the wind, so my hair is like messed up, and I made some tea for some caffeine. So. Let's talk about gauge math. So when I first swatched for pitch, I swatched with the needle that it calls for, which is a size six. And my moss stitch was on gauge, but my cable gauge was way too large. So I decided to go down two needle sizes to a US four. My moss stitch gauge was then too small, but my cable gauge was still too large. So at this point, I had to make a decision on what I was going to do. I decided to stick with the US 6 so that my moss stitch gauge would be correct and change my knitting technique to combination knitting which removes the extra slack in your purl stitches and so it can really help uh, cinch cables up and make them smaller. So after I made those changes my cable gauge was still a little too large. It was still 0.7 stitches larger than the pattern gauge but I didn't want to go down any more needle sizes because I wanted my moss stitch gauge to be correct because the sweater is mostly made out of moss stitch, um, like the surface area of the moss stitch is larger than the cables, and so I wanted to make sure that that stitch gauge was correct, but that left me with a larger cable gauge still. So I wanted to know how this was going to affect my finished size of my garment. Was it going to produce a much larger garment or would I be okay with the size difference? 0.7 stitches might not seem like the biggest difference, um, but when you factor that into the size of a garment, you know, it can make a bigger impact than you might think. So I wanted to kind of check and make sure I was good with the gauge that I was getting. So the cable gauge in the pattern is 7.55 stitches per inch. My cable gauge is 6.8 stitches per inch. 
So if we divide the pattern gauge by my gauge, we get 1.11. And if you multiply that by 100 to see that number as a percentage, you get 111% which means that my cable gauge is 11% larger than the pattern cable gauge. Out of the back panel in my size, there are 63 stitches in just the cable charts. So I just wanna deal with the cable stitches since my moss stitch is correct. If you divide the cable stitches of the back panel by the pattern gauge, 7.55, that is 8.3 inches. If you divide 63 by my cable gauge, which is 6.8, you get 9.26 inches. And if we look at the schematic to see the back panel total width, it is 20.75 inches, um, which means mine is going to be 21.7 inches. Now we know what my back panel size will turn out to be. And if we do that same math with the two fronts, we find that my total sweater circumference will be 1.75 inches larger than the pattern circumference. So that's a difference that I feel comfortable with. Um, I chose to make the smallest size, which is the 41 inch size. The next size up is the 45 and a half inch. And I didn't want that much positive ease. My bust is 36 inches, so I wanted some positive ease, but I didn't want uh, I didn't want it to be super oversized. So if I had chosen to knit the 45 and a half, I would have made a sweater that was way too big. But by choosing the 41, I get a size somewhere in the middle of those first two sizes. So the last thing to check are the sleeves because there is a cable down the sleeve. The pattern sleeve is 11 and a quarter inches. And with my gauge, my sleeves will be just under 11 and a half inches. So a quarter inch is like not too big of a deal. I could just decide not to worry about it but um, I will probably account for that difference and the way I'm going to do that is just to remove two of the moss stitches. Um, so that is my moss stitch gauge times the difference. You can kind of use your own like judgment to decide how you wanna remove stitches. Um, I think the easiest way to do it is just to remove some of the like background stitches, which is the moss stitch. So I'll probably end up removing just two of those stitches from each of the sleeves. Yeah, so that's really all that's involved in kind of checking your gauge against the pattern, figuring out, you know, how to create the sweater that you want with a different gauge than the pattern, but still, you know, get the results that you expect. I love playing around with gauge and uh, just changing things a bit from the way the pattern tells you to do things. It enables me to move forward with what I want to do. I didn't want to have to change my cable gauge any more than I already had. That was kind of where I felt comfortable with it and I'm happy with the gauge that I got. So just knowing that I can like check everything and make sure that I'm still getting the final sweater that I want um, is what makes knitting so satisfying for me. Okay, I've stopped talking about gauge now. I want to show you a really fun project that I just started. Um, so probably like two years ago, I had this idea to crochet a granny square sweater of some type um, inspired by those like vintage, really colorful, granny square blankets that have a border of black. I feel like I've just, I see these everywhere, like in media, I've seen them at thrift stores, and I love that like colorful granny square with the black. So I have in front of me a very exciting box of Knit Picks palette. I love Knit Picks and I love palette. There's like, I think over 50 colors. There's so many shades in each color. Um, and so you can really like pick exactly what you want. They were out of stock of a couple colors, but they had close enough shades to what I was looking for that I was able to put all of this together. And um, it's also fairly inexpensive. Um, I wouldn't say it's like cheap, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not hand-eyed yarn. So 
I put together this palette and I'm going to use black for the border and sort of the main parts of the sweater and I am crocheting a granny square cardigan. I'm just going to start holding up granny squares as I talk because I have made a lot of them at this point. I still have a long way to go though. So I'm using the Ariana uh, pattern by Barocco. It's a free pattern. It's by Amy Christoffers. Um, I started out doubling this yarn. Palette is a fingering weight yarn and the pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn. So I decided to double it up for like a DK worsted and my gauge was actually way too large. So I decided to go down to just using a single strand of the fingering weight using the hook called for in the pattern and um, my gauge is like perfect. So I don't really know why that is. Um, I didn't really see anyone else on Ravelry who has made this project like talking about their crochet gauge, but that's how it ended up working for me. I love this one. This one's very spring inspired. I ended up liking the airiness and the lightness of just the single strand of fingering weight. So that's all that I've made so far. Um, so I'm I'm happy with with what like how it ended up, but yeah, I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure how I got a worsted weight gauge with a fingering weight yarn. I don't feel like I crochet weirdly, <laughs> or just like you know my crochet gauge. I feel like it's fairly normal, fairly average. I am just fully in the granny square brain rot. Like I made a little nest on my couch and I've just been crocheting away, making all these colorful granny squares and just deciding in the moment uh, what colors to go with. It's been so much fun. I am weaving in my ends as I go. I've kind of nailed down a technique to like crochet over half of my ends and then do uh, like a switch back and um, weave in the rest of the end um, and that has been really efficient and uh, it works well so basically every time I finish a round I will weave in my ends um, and then by the time I crochet the granny square all of my ends are woven in which is great because I don't think I could survive weaving them all in at the end. I think I need like 46 full size squares and like half of that for half size squares. Um, that's the way that the pattern handles the shaping um, as you create like half triangle squares. Um, and then the all of the hems, like the button band and the cuffs um, are knit, um, which I think is a fun way to combine both crochet and knitting. Um, plus the pattern's free, so that is nice. There are only two sizes. I think it's supposed to be like, because it's an oversized garment and you know, you're working with squares that get bigger on all sides, it's like hard to grade, um, but you know, it's obviously not gonna fit everyone. So I am making the, I think it's the small medium size. Um, and then there's one size larger. I am not going for any sort of like perfect fit or anything here. It's gonna be oversized, it's gonna be a little slouchy. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a bummer that it doesn't have more than two sizes. I'm gonna quickly go through each of the colorways. This is Hyacinth, Sagebrush, Macaw, Clover, Peapod, Cosmopolitan, conch, turmeric, celestial, pool, cream, and the black is just black. I've been having a great time just crocheting my little heart out. Uh, I've been watching The Three Body Problem on Netflix, which is another sci-fi show, and it's just been a delight making these, so. I have two more projects to show you because I've just been casting on. Actually, the reason I've been casting on is because I really want to knit with my hand spun. So these next two projects are knit with my hand spun yarn. It's very exciting. The first thing I cast on with my hand spun is a Musselburgh hat. Um, I love the Musselburgh pattern. 
it's super popular i'm sure you know about it um and this is the progress that i've made so this is yarn that i spun fractally and so you get these cool like longer um, color changes through the yarn and i think this project for a fractal spin is just like the perfect combo um, so i'm really excited to see how the rest of this works up it's been so fun knitting with hand spun like if you if your brain needs some dopamine like knit with your hand spun it is absolutely like one of the top experiences of my life that's probably a little bit dramatic but that's kind of how my heart feels working on this project so yeah it's there's not a ton to say about it um this is not the most consistent uh hand spun ever this is my second ever skein um and i knit it or i spun it about a dk weight maybe worsted in some spots um, I'm knitting this on size 6 needles. I first cast on with the size 3 and realized my yarn was way too thick um, and dense. It, it was just creating too dense of a fabric. So I went up to a size 6. It's just been creating a really nice fabric. Again, it's very inconsistent. It's not perfect at all. Um, there it's very thick and thin but it has been very fun to work on this project has been sitting on my desk and is what i pull out when i'm in meetings where i am not presenting or like driving the meeting so it's been really nice to work on it just around and around here's the rest of the skein this is, I think, merino wool. Um, I picked it up from just a yarn store somewhere in Washington. Um, I didn't really have a lot of information about it. It was when I was brand new to spinning and I was kind of getting my hands on whatever fiber I could find. Um, and these are not really my colors, but I am like surprisingly loving this the last spinning project and the last knitting project that i have to show is a pair of socks so this is knit out of a skein that i spun to be self-striping and i think i would consider this like mostly a success i'm very happy with them let me actually grab a sock blocker because this is not the most pleasant to look at Ta-da! This is the first sock and I've cast on the second one. The second one I think is turning out even better than the first one. So you can tell that, you know, obviously I, I wasn't like perfect <laughs> with um, making sure that the stripes were like clean and just one color. Um, this is some superwash merino from nest fiber i actually joined the nest fiber club there was a three month club through the winter it was october november december so this is the october club um i joined it because i saw this colorway and loved it and knew immediately that i wanted to try to spin self-striping yarn to make socks so i saw this fiber for this particular project and uh, I'm really happy that it kind of like came to fruition. I spun singles as thin as I could spin because I knew that I needed to do a chain ply in order to keep the striping together, like to keep the, the plies, to get the plies to match up and keep them in a striping sequence. So I spun my singles as thin as I could manage. I chain plied them together and I ended up with like a DK weight. Um, I put the exact like specifications on my Instagram post. Um, and then I knit toe up sock, um, knit it uh, in two way two ribbing with a flegal heel and then just knit the leg in rib. Um, I think that this is similar if not basically the same as the 
DRK Everyday Sock or DRK Sock, uh, whichever Andrew Mallory pattern that is. But I don't own that pattern, I just, it, like, it looks very similar. I'm pretty sure that pattern uses a flegal heel and is ribbed. So I do think the second one's coming out better. I think it's more consistent and the stripes are a little bit nicer. Like the colors are a little cleaner. This has also just like been a dopamine project. Like this is just so much fun to work on. So I'm getting close to starting the flegal heel on the second sock. And once I get past that point, I'm sure that these are just gonna like fly off the needles because they are a thicker weight and they're also just a lot of fun to work on. So I am learning a lot about spinning. Um, now that I have worked on or am working on two knitting projects with my hand spun and I was able to take fiber and put together like the full project of what I wanted to make and then like act on it and actually make that um, I feel much more confident to spin for a sweater which is that's kind of been my whole goal but I wanted to take it slow and not just jump in and you know create something that I wasn't happy with so I am currently planning a sweater spin and hopefully I will talk about that in my next video just because I think it's really fun to see the skein here's what I have left I really focused on being consistent um, and this is definitely my most consistent skein even though chain plying can kind of produce a less consistent yarn because you are plying the same stretch of yarn onto itself um, and so if you have inconsistencies it can really show that but I think despite that um, I'm just really proud of the yarn that I made and uh, I love spinning. It's just so much fun. It's just so much fun. <laughs> so I've also been getting into a groove of spinning while I listen to audiobooks because I still need to mostly look at my fiber and yarn while I'm spinning it. Um, and so watching TV is a little challenging. Um, I end up missing a lot. So I've really been getting into audiobooks. The last project that I have to show you is what I'm wearing. So I have started sewing. I learned to sew as a kid, but most of my life I didn't have a sewing machine. And uh, there was a couple years in college where I had access to one and so I made some bags. But I have always wanted to try to sew garments. Um, I would say like a year ago, I finally was in a position to buy a sewing machine. I bought the Janome HD 3000 from my local sewing shop and um, it's been great. It's very simple. It is just a mechanical machine. It is not computerized, um, but it does kind of all the things that you need it to do. And um, so it's been working great for me. And just recently, I finally kind of got my act together to figure out what patterns to make and kind of how to teach myself to sew. Um, I have just been learning through YouTube videos and uh, just reading blog posts and articles and Reddit comments and like anything I can find about sewing. I have just been soaking it all up. So this is my third garment. This is the Mile End Sweatshirt by Closet Core. I made it out of this French terry, um, indigo French terry from the shop Harmony. Um, I just came across them on Instagram. I think they're based out of Utah, um, but they sell a lot of dead stock fabric. And so what I decided to do was find five patterns that I felt like were in my scope of skill level and also something that I would want to like wear. So I got all of my patterns, I got them printed in a large format, I traced them all, and um, I bought a bunch of dead stock fabric that I liked but uh, also wasn't too expensive, you know, it wasn't like super nice stuff. So I've been using 
this fabric as a way to create like wearable muslins sort of um, because a lot of this fabric was actually cheaper than muslin fabric the first garment i made was the elizabeth suzanne clyde work pants and those do not fit me properly i learned a lot and i know what i'm going to change uh, when i make them again the second um, garment i made was the closet core uh, t-shirt. I think it's just called the core t-shirt. Um, it's a free pattern and it's just a basic set and sleeve um, crew neck t-shirt and that was a lot of fun. That was my first time working with a knits fabric. I bought um, a jersey needle. I bought a twin needle. So I've just been having a lot of fun learning how to work with that fabric and learning how to finish my seams. Uh, I don't own a serger. I will likely buy one at some point, but I want to kind of get, I want to progress further into my sewing. And then I made this sweatshirt. Um, I am really proud of this sweatshirt. Uh, it fits me super well. I didn't change anything about the pattern. I followed everything exactly. Um, I did all of the top stitching when it called for that in the pattern. I used my twin needle around the neckband. I want to make like all of my clothes now. This just really opened up a whole new world for me and um, there's so many things that I want to make and I would love to put together a whole outfit of things that I've sewn and things that I've knit and knitting garments out of my hand spun and I am just like fully in crafting mode like it's all I want to do it's mostly what I think about it's just been where my brain is at this year and it's a lot of fun so I already have fabric for a couple more projects I have cut out fabric for the style arc bob pants um i have already watched a tutorial on how to sew them because i know that the style arc instructions are not super detailed um closet core so far has been great i didn't have to watch any videos on how to do it um, i was able to just read the instructions and figure everything out um, but yeah i cut out some of this um linen i'm pretty sure it's a linen cotton um harmony is a great place to get cheaper linen and linen blends um i found i don't know much about <laughs> um, buying fabric in general i've just like looked at a bunch of different places to buy fabric and linen can get a little pricey um but yeah they have dead stock and kind of some cheaper um options so i picked up this black and i've already cut that out so i just need to sew it and I also picked up this uh, rib knit in this really beautiful blue color. Um, this is going to be for a Zoe tank by True Bias. Um, so I'm really excited to try that one out. So I think I finally caught you up on everything that I've been working on. It's a lot. Um, my crafting has been really getting me through life lately. Uh, we have just had a lot going on work has still been very overwhelming and not the best um and we are going on year three of a giant house remodel that we have done the majority of um and so it's just been a lot of work and a lot going on uh but my brain has really been like why do anything else when you could be making things i always love knowing what projects you're working on um, and thanks so much for staying around and watching and <laughs> engaging in whatever way you want to engage in. All right, I'll see you next time.